Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons and we're going to be moving back into our math series uh, covering this next part back towards uh, what some of you guys may call pure math uh, kind of stuff, right? We're going to be looking at vectors, right? So far we've been looking at a lot of statistics, right? We've been looking at PNC, probability, um, hypotesting, all the various kinds of, you know, stats uh, chapters that are in your syllabus. Uh, but we haven't really looked at the pure math section, right? And we're going to be starting to embark on this because I know that a lot of you guys are facing struggles in these areas as well. So let's look through some of these parts, uh, especially this chapter on vectors. So this is going to be part one. Right? We're going to be covering some of the basic concepts in this video. Um, the entire point of this series is to try and condense your learning. Try to um, just take the important parts of the syllabus. So a lot of it you'll find it can be a bit choppy, right? It's going to be really just looking at the kind of like my tips and tricks uh, for, for you guys, uh, kind of notes that you want to have going into the exam so that you're well prepared, right? This is going to be like a summary of everything that you have to know about vectors. So this first part, we'll look at the very, very basic stuff. I think you guys should already know these stuff. Um, and then subsequently, in the next few parts, we'll look at things like vector lines and then planes, so on and so forth. So bear with me, we're going to try and uh, skim through this part. It shouldn't be too long of a video, hopefully. So let's get started. All right, first thing we should always take note of in the case of vectors is we have got the various kinds of planes. So the first relationship we have is the xy plane. All right, the xy plane, you have to know that for your z value, sorry, there's no squiggly line here, your z value is going to be 0, All right? And your normal vector over here, is going to be 0, 0, 1. All right, so this is just to kind of like summarize everything about planes. Huh? We're going to look at the various planes. Uh, good to know why, because there are certain times, certain questions we give you, um, given the yz plane, given the xz plane, uh, and they ask you to find what the normal vector is, or that it's kind of like inferred, whereby you have to go and figure out what the normal vector is. So let's do a summary of this. Right, next we have got the yz plane, of course. Right, in this case, you have got x, which is equivalent to 0. So you find that it's always the alphabet that is missing, right? If ever you need a way to remember it simpler, this is how you can remember. And a normal vector will just be whatever values that you have, right? In this case, we have got x, which is going to be 1, 0, 0. Right, so remember the normal vector is the one that is uh, perpendicular, right? To your, to your plane. And lastly, we have got the x, z plane. And in this case, we have what will be just y equals to 0. And your normal vector over here, if required, will just be the y value that is equivalent to 1. So it will be 0, oops, 0, 1, 0. Right, so this is just a very, very basic stuff. So I guess even more basic, you will find that you have to learn or at least know about this thing called the unit vector. Right, what the unit vector is, is basically vectors. It's basically just a unit of a of a given vector, right? No, no, whatever this vector is. So basically, a key uh, rule of thumb that you should remember of is that vectors in the same direction have the same unit vector. So an easy to remember this is just kind of like you know you have got like let's say five units of apples, right? You've got five apples all together. If you take one unit, it'll just be, let's say, just one part of it. And then you've got another unit, another unit, another unit, and so on and so forth, right? This is what we look at. And the key formula over here that we have to take note of is that our unit vector, with remember our squiggly line at the bottom, is equivalent to the vector over its magnitude, right? So sometimes you may have to figure out what the vector of the, the uh, what this value of a is, so you can simply just convert it. It will just be a is equivalent. You basically just cross multiplying, right? This is a very, very basics. It's just simply just cross multiplying it this way. Um, if ever you have to find what this vector a is instead based on the data that they've given you guys. All right, so just take note that when you have, let's say u is a given unit vector, a rule of thumb to remember is that the magnitude of u is very simply equivalent to 1. All right? So it should be quite simple. I think this is the unit vector part. However, I know a lot of students tend to be a bit 
you know iffy on this part so hopefully this can help you guys to clarify a bit on unit factors all right next one that's kind of basic as well we have got collinear points so collinear points if you guys have forgotten already right it's basically points that kind of like just lie on the same line right they need to have a certain condition whereby they possess a common point um, amongst let's say three different uh, points right give you an example over here so if let's say a b and c are collinear points what happens over here you have got factor a b will be equivalent to the lambda of b c right lambda is a uh, it's a variable, right? It could be any value, right? It depends on whatever the uh, vectors of A, B, and C are accordingly, right? But from here, usually what the question will ask you guys is to prove that A, B is parallel to A, C, right? Quite an interesting question. And that B is a common point. So just take note, we just write this down. Okay, you could figure out, find a question that has asked you guys this before. You find it's quite a common question, right? And all you have to do is to just basically prove that uh, uh, that B is the common point over here, right? And then uh, from there, you can basically work out what the value of lambda is and so on and so forth. All right, so this is just another little part that I think you guys should take note of. All right, going into a bit more of the tricky stuff, we have got what we call the ratio theorem, which you'll find comes in quite handy when you're comparing between two planes later on down the road. So it's good to know what this ratio theorem is all about. So let's just draw a simple triangle and kind of like figure out what this is. Okay, it's not meant to be like symmetrical or anything, right? So so it can, it can kind of be like a bit off. Okay, what do we have over here? Let's say we have got points A, B, C. They lie on this straight line up here, right? How this works is that we basically have an origin, right? Remember, it's your vectors A is basically just OA, vector B is just OB, and then OC accordingly. And you basically have these values of lambda and mu. So how the ratio theorem works is basically just to cross uh, your vector and this lambda and mu value together, right? To, towards the opposite side. I'll show you, show you guys an example. So you're always going to think of it as though you're, find, you're trying to find the line that is in the middle of two vectors that have been given. So in this case, OB. So what you will get is you get OB is equivalent to lambda and then cross it over, right? So lambda, you cross it over to the opposite side you can see that lambda crossover, you get OC plus the mu value cross over to this other vector over here. You have got OA over the entire value of lambda plus mu, which is basically the entire uh, unit value of your AC, right? And that will give you the answer of whatever OB was, right? So this is just a way of working out vectors. Uh, I believe the schools who have already gone through the full explanation, like I said, this is just meant to be a quick summary. So I'll just leave this formula here and just help you guys to take note of the way to remember this. Uh, very, very common next time when you guys deal with planes and they're asking you to find uh, a certain distance, right? This could always be quite useful, right? Because you could find like a midpoint and then try and get uh, whatever the vector is required, right? We'll go through this next time if, if we have a chance, okay? For now, just understand the ratio theorem. All right, next, I am just going to skim through real quick your scalar and vector product just to refresh and jolt your memory a little. So for the scalar product, all right, I want you guys to think of scalar product kind of like a, uh, sort of like a multiplication, right? You have got cosine of a certain angle. Let's say we have PQR is equivalent to the vector QP. So whatever that is in between, right? So this is in between these two, QP and QR, over the magnitude of QP and QR. Right, you guys can draw this out, and I'm sure you can see it much clearer. Right, in essence, it's just whatever the angle is in between these two vectors over here. On the other hand, for vector product, uh, vector product, you need kind of like a special formula. Right? I think you guys have this in your formula sheet, so go and take note of it if you're still unclear. But vector product, how does it work? You have got one vector cross another vector it's equivalent to the magnitude of one of them multiplied by the other sine theta and you have got n right so this part over here i'll cover more in detail next time we go through vector product a little more in depth for now just take note of it 
and remember that for your U and V, you have got your formula which should be in your formula sheet. Uh, depending on which batch you're from, it should be your MF26, right? So you can go and check that one out. Uh, and take note this is how the vector product usually works. Alright, so let's maybe just go through a little bit more before we end off uh, today's video. Right, let's just go through a quick one on vector algebra. Right? I know a lot of students tend to struggle with vector algebra. It's not the easiest to master. So let's cover what are some of the common ones that you're going to have to take note of. First off, a dot a is very simply just kind of like a square. Right? It's kind of like 3 times 3. You get 9. Right? So it's kind of like the same thing, 3 squared. Or for example, 4 times 4. Right, let's say if you substitute a to be 4, you get 4 squared. Right, this only works in the case of uh, when you are dotting them, right, a dot product. Right, the next one that you always will see is a dot b plus c. Right, for this one, I want you guys to just think of it as a is kind of like a common factor. So just think of a, let's say as a value of 2, dot 1 plus 3. So if you work this out right, without adding up the 1 plus 3, of course, you have your rainbow method that you guys would usually use in secondary school. You will have 2 times 1 plus 2 times 3. So same thing, what you have over here, you end up getting is a dot b plus your a dot c. Right? So very, very standard. Kind of like just imagine that they are numbers. Right? This only works for dot product. Let me just re-emphasize that again. Next one you have is when you have got a dot b. This is interchangeable. If let's say a is the value of 4, b is the value of 3, you can just sub it around, you get b dot a, you get the same answer as well. Alright, sometimes you may need to shift these around depending on the question, so just take note that they can be shifted in the case of dot product. Alright, next one you have is a dot b, I think this is the one that a lot of students tend to struggle with, it's equivalent to let's say 0. So if they give you this value, they're giving you a vector algebra and they say it's equivalent to 0, what you can conclude from this is that if you guys recall back to your, what we learned in lines, we will, we will learn it soon, one of the conclusions would be that A is perpendicular to B. Alright, so this could be one conclusion over here. Alternatively, you can have A tilde is equivalent to 0 tilde, or B tilde is equivalent to 0 tilde. So let's say the questions are asking you to prove, right, that uh, the vector B is just 0 tilde. What you can do is you can basically just try to get to this step over here, and you should be able to formulate and make this assumption. Alright, so if not, um, if we look at it in terms of just a quick example, you guys can try to work this one out. I think it's very simple. If you've got the modulus of u vector u plus 3v, right, this is just very simply, just to break it down for you guys, it's kind of like what you guys have learned before in algebra. u plus 3v dot u plus 3v. From here, you can simply just solve it accordingly. Right, so this is just to kind of like uh, encapsulate whatever we've just learned. Right? It's very, very standard in general. Alright, so that should be about it for this part. Like I said, it's just the very, very basics of algebra. In the next few parts, we're going to be looking more at lines, uh, and then further on planes, and so on and so forth. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. If you did learn something in this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. It really does help me a lot. And leave a like on this video as well. Share it with your friends. Let everyone know about this video as well, if it has helped you. Uh, if not, if you, got, you guys have questions, feel free to leave in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.